I did a review of the Xtool P2 about a year ago, and since then I've been able to review a bunch of similar CO2 desktop style lasers, but there's still one feature that really stands out with this machine, and it's really two, it's the camera system. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what it is, how it works, and three real life situations where you can use it in your projects. Plus at the end, I wanna talk about a use case I really haven't seen other people using, but it's been super helpful as I'm actually doing builds in the shop. All right, let's jump into it. In full disclosure, unlike my first video of the Xtool P2 where I did my official review of the machine, that was not sponsored, but this video is sponsored by Xtool and they did want me to highlight the dual camera system. And because of that, I actually dived a lot deeper into the camera to kind of figure out how they work. But as always, I want to be as transparent as I can with you. Okay, so the most unique feature of this is the fact this is dual. You have two different cameras on here. Most desktop CO2 machines like this typically only have a single camera, and that is usually right here in the lid. So as you open it up, the camera also opens up. And sometimes you actually have to open the lid to take a picture of what is down below. But in this case, it's not attached to the lid whatsoever. Both of the cameras are, I'm looking at my screen to see if I'm pointing at the right spot. You've got one main camera right here, and that is really similar to the wide angle cameras you have on these style machines. And the really unique feature about this guy is there's another camera right under here. And you can see in the shot where both of those cameras are. Now, both of these cameras are 16 megapixels, which is about double of what you find on other machines machines, you're going to get really good resolution. And they're also most importantly going to be very accurate because in general, the cameras give you the ability to be able to see what you're doing inside of the software itself. Now, like with all of these, the wide angle isn't going to be the most exact. So to get a better idea of how the 180 degree panoramic camera works, we're actually in the indoor studio. Uh, and actually I've just set this up. So it's kind of echoey. So sorry about that. But I do have this big cutting mat right here. And if I was to zoom this all the way out with my wide angle lens, you can start to see how the distortion is working, especially way over here on the sides. So the nice part about the Xtool 180 degree camera is all of that math to figure out those angles is incorporated directly inside of the machine. Meaning when you turn the machine on, you're gonna get a live preview good to go. It's already gonna be calibrated to the machine. Now that's compared to other machines that are gonna be using Lightburn like Ohm Tech or Thunder or even Monport, where you're gonna to to do all of that calibration directly inside of Lightburn. I actually had to go through this process recently when I was reviewing a diode machine that had a camera integrated and you basically had to laser the these four dots, and then you had to line up those dots manually with points. So then it knew how to stretch everything out. Now, Xtool is claiming that their system is gonna give you like 40% better precision in positioning. And I don't have a, like a super easy way to measure that, but I do find it is going to be more accurate, especially when you go to that next step and use the camera that is directly integrated into the camera head itself, then you have it locked on exactly. And that one has always been better than what I find inside of Lightburn. In fact, here is an example of what the camera looks like untreated inside of Xtool software. And then this is what it looks like once it corrects it. And again, that's something that's happening automatically every time you turn the machine on and every time you refresh that camera image. Now that's compared to the second camera, which actually rides along with the laser head itself. So right inside of here, where you actually have the lens and you have the autofocus mechanism, right underneath here is where the camera actually is. So inside of the software, you can take a picture of the section you want it to be super exact, and then you can do your design inside of there as well. Now I definitely have done a lot just with the wide angle camera and it works fine, but if you really are needing to get into the details, this one is very nice. Now this isn't a live camera and a lot of times when you open and shut the lid, it will reset. But if you do move your material or like adjust things in the real world, you just hit this refresh button and it's just going to re take it. And you can see this is fairly quick. I have seen some systems that do have a single camera just in the laser head itself, but in order to get a full view of everything in there, it has to move that laser head. And usually it takes like nine to 12 individual pictures. And that takes a little while, especially if you're just trying to do minor adjustments. So the combo is a really good compromise in terms of speed as well as accuracy. Okay. So the first of three use cases has to do with precise positioning. Um, this is not a super, super tiny example, but with this guy, it's not super big, but it was pretty easy just to place the text directly in the middle of this block. And you can see that happening in the software right now. Again, I've already got that wide angle shot. Then I'm using the laser head camera to take a shot of just the work area that I need to work with and then positioning it and lasering it 
from there. Now, you can get a lot more extreme with that. You can see right now I am engraving things that are a lot smaller, and I'm still able to get really good accurate position so everything lines up. So a good example I've seen a lot of people do is like engraving on pencils. So if you are having to get like on that just edge of the pencil, being able to accurately see what you're doing and being able to place it is really, really nice. Okay, so number two has to do with the material itself you're working with. And as you use your laser more and more, um, you're gonna pile up more and more things like this, which is just a material that already has stuff that is cut out. Whether they were things that you messed up like down here or actual pieces that are fully cut out. Now this is just cardboard, so it's super cheap, but you might be working with more expensive stuff or you just may not have extra. So it's really handy to be able to see if you can cut out or engrave whatever you're trying to do from material you've already got. So being able to save material waste is super handy with cameras. And I would say that's one of the biggest benefits of cameras in general, regardless if it's on a P2 or another machine. Being able to take the design that you're wanting to cut out and place it on material that already has stuff cut out on it is a lot easier if you can just visually do it. And actually in an upcoming video, I am doing a Harry Potter inspired like book nook, which is basically like a little tiny diorama inside of a bookcase next to two books. And one of the things with that is I needed to laser cut out a bunch of storefronts. So I started with fully blank material, but as I was going through, I was able to reposition stuff that I needed later onto the material I've already been using. So I was able to use that waste versus just throwing it out. Now the more normal process that a lot of these machines use is like a red dot positioning, meaning they have a little red laser laser dot that just goes around the design. It literally is tracing the image. That works great, but it does take a while to get it like positioned correctly, especially if you're trying to get around the holes that you've already cut out in material. So cameras are super nice for that and a feature I always miss when I don't have it. For number three, we need to go to Diagon Alley, the storefront for Ollivanders where they sell wands in Harry Potter. You're a wizard, Harry. And this is to show that you can engrave on curved surfaces. Now I'm not saying curved like a full cylinder to where this does have a rotary and it can spin your cylinders where you're doing like tumblers or glassware or stuff like that. This is just if you have a curve you want to engrave around, but basically use the camera system to map out the geometry of your curve. So earlier we we're talking about that some lasers will use a camera in the laser head to take individual pictures and that takes a while. It's the same type of process, but it's actually using a red laser laser pointer to be able to capture the distance data. So in the software, all I did was define the top left and the bottom right corner to basically give me the rectangle area that I wanted to work with. And then I just told it how many points I wanted it to measure. And that works great because maybe you just have like a simple plane, it's not even curved. You can just do that with like three points. But if you do have a curve, and especially like compound curves or even things that are not smooth throughout, um, you can do as many points as you want. So then it knows how far to lower the laser head as it engraves. So with this guy, this isn't going to be the final example, but you can see right now that the machine is lowering its laser head and it's adjusting it as it's going through the engraving process. Now, one thing you definitely do wanna keep in mind is as you get more and more pronounced in your curve, so like how steep it gets, it's still like projecting your design straight down, meaning that if it gets really steep, like the S or even like the O on Ollivanders, it looks fine, we're looking straight on, but from the side, it is getting stretched out. But a pretty common use case I've seen people using this is actually on bowls, so especially something that may be like too wide to be able to drop onto a rotary, uh, because the especially if you have the riser on this guy, you can drop the bowl down here and have plenty of space to be able to adjust it as needed. All right, at the beginning, I said we had three examples plus one extra. Uh, we actually have four examples and one extra. Now, fourth example has to do with batch engraving. And that just uses the image it takes with that wide angle camera. It's able to place one design that you have on an individual piece of material and transfer it to a bunch of other ones that you might also have in there. And to show this, I did a quick example, um, just like with these walnut coasters that I just placed the text circle because I'm super creative on the inside. And then I also had a bunch of other blanks in the work bed. And then to place it on all of the other material, um, you can just batch process it across. Now it does get a little hard if your material is thick because again, it is a wide angle shot. So you're gonna get some depth, especially as you get to the, the sides of your work bed. But where I've seen this really helpful is on thinner material anyways, with like dog tags or like smaller tags you might put on gifts. And the one thing you can do if you do have thicker material, you can actually create a little jig that has all of 
of these circles cut out that is that thicker material and drop these down into. Now these will be exactly positioned, but then you can still place whatever text you want on a single one. And then it goes across to all of the others as well. And it's just gonna speed it up. And then you're able to update that really quick. Okay, so that was four. Now for the actual extra one. And this is something I haven't really seen a lot of people do directly inside of the machine itself because uh, this is going to be a storefront, but it doesn't look like a storefront really. You're gonna have like little windowsill ledges, little stuff up here just to add details on top of this. So instead of going all the way back to the initial design software and draw all that stuff on here, I can just place it inside of the machine, use the image that the machine takes itself, and on top of the actual material I'm working with, draw out the shapes with the tools inside of Xtool Creative Space. And then especially if I take the more exact positioning image, it's really easy to quickly go in there and add in those details. Now this would be even more useful if whatever you're trying to create stuff on top of, it wasn't a digital file to begin with, because in my case, I could go back to Adobe Illustrator and draw on those designs and bring them back into Xtool Creative Space. But if this was something I didn't create myself, uh, that would be pretty hard. I'd have to like measure this and create the design from scratch to be able to create another design on top of it. So just being able to drop it directly into the machine and keep working from there saves you a step and it's going to be very accurate. And actually an extra even bonus, it's not really a project use case, but it's something you're going to do on every single project that you have has to do with the autofocus system. So this does have a Z axis motor that is inside right there and you don't have to either physically focus it up and down or even like type in the material thickness said i'm pretty sure it's using uh, either the red laser dot it has right here it also has another one over here and then combined with like the camera system and some crazy math it figures out what that material thickness is and for the most case it gets it pretty spot on um you are going to have a little bit of a margin for error now you still can override it and put in the material thickness if you already know it but being able to do it auto is always super nice and pretty much something i do every single time i'm going in to make something. Now there are a lot of other features to this machine. And if you wanna see my thoughts on those and how it stacks up to the competition, you can check out my full review of the Xtool P2 right there. All right, until next time where we actually are going to work on a project, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.